Hello, this is Robert Smith of M2 Technologies, here to present a feature comparison of the various versions of Autodesk CFD. The goal in this presentation is to clarify the differences between Autodesk CFD, CFD Advanced, CFD Motion, and CFD Flex. First, I want to quickly review what the terms simulation and CFD mean and how they fit into your workflow. Let's cover some basics. What is simulation? Simulation is an integral part of the digital prototyping process. Essentially, the 3D CAD model of your product is your digital prototype, the sole source of truth from which information flows to design and engineering, test and validation, manufacturing and production, and sales and marketing. Simulation takes place in the test and validation phase of the digital prototyping process. This is the phase of your process where critical questions need to get answered. Questions like, will my part break? How light can I make it? What happens when the temperature changes? These questions have traditionally been answered by building a physical prototype for testing, a costly and time-consuming process. Leveraging your digital prototype and the Autodesk Simulation software portfolio, products can be tested in a virtual environment thereby reducing or eliminating costly physical prototype iterations. Why simulate? Simulation leads to better products in less time and at lower costs. Performance can be predicted and materials and design features can be optimized. This leads to a higher quality product. Costs can be reduced as fewer physical prototypes are needed for testing and defects that may lead to unsatisfied customers can be uncovered while corrective action is still relatively inexpensive. Finally, innovation is fostered. Designers and engineers are free to explore more what-if scenarios as testing these ideas digitally is more feasible than manufacturing a prototype. One of those crazy ideas may be your next big innovation. What makes Autodesk Simulation different? Who uses Autodesk Simulation? The names you see on screen are makers of some good simulation tools. In fact, they are great simulation tools. We at M2 and Autodesk don't see ourselves in direct competition with these products. In many instances, Autodesk products live in harmony with these products within the same company because they serve different purposes. Let me explain. Note the triangle graphic on screen. This triangle represents the entire community of engineers and designers. Traditionally, Highly educated and highly specialized individuals, represented by the top portion of the triangle, have been relied upon to perform FEA analysis. These individuals are typically career analysts. They are expensive people who use expensive tools. This type of analysis is often done at the end of the design cycle for validation purposes. Autodesk simulation is part of a newer approach to simulation, called upfront simulation. It's for the everyday engineer and designer. These individuals often wear many hats, and running analysis software may only be a part-time role. They need results early in the design process to help them make more informed decisions while the product is still in development. For this reason, they need the tool to be easy to learn and easy to use. Autodesk Simulation serves these users. So when is the best time to simulate and optimize your design? Over the product development life cycle, the ability to affect the functional capabilities of the design declines as the cost of making changes increases. The best time to identify failure modes is during the design and engineering phase. This way, the design is still flexible enough to make the necessary changes and cost of those changes is minimalized. What is CFD? CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, studies the flow of liquids and gases in and around solid objects. Thermal effects can also be modeled. You'll find a comparison matrix on the Autodesk CFD product page. Note the URL on screen for its location. This matrix lists many features and shows which versions of Autodesk CFD include those features. This is a long list and the features are not explained in detail. You may wonder what version is right for you. We hope to help answer that question in the next few minutes. What you will notice if you study the comparison matrix is that most of the features are included in all versions. This document serves as a sales tool, of course, 
so it's not surprising that the authors wanted to make it clear how much the customer is getting for their money, even at the basic level. Most of these items are features of the user interface itself, called the multi-scenario design study environment. This includes geometry tools, meshing, and results interrogation tools. We will not focus on the universal features in this presentation. Instead, we will focus on the features that differentiate the higher tiers. Autodesk CFD products are available as networked perpetual licenses. The interface, called the Multi-Scenario Design Study Environment, I'll call it the DSE, is purchased and licensed separately from the solver. This gives the customer flexibility. For example, you may want several users setting up or reviewing analyses, but you only need to be running one analysis at a time. You would license several DSEs, but only one solver. Conversely, you may wish to have several local workstations solving different analyses in parallel, or a cluster working together on a large problem. In this case, you would have several solver licenses, but you may only have the need for one DSE to be open at any given time. The DSE is the same no matter what version of the solver you select. A minimum of one DSE license and one solver license is required to use CFD. Three solvers are available, the basic solver, the advanced solver, and the motion solver. These are called CFD, CFD Advanced, and CFD Motion, respectively. The differences between these is the focus of the presentation. Note that the solver tiers are inclusive, meaning the advanced solver includes all the capability of the basic solver in addition to advanced features, and the motion solver includes all the basic and advanced capabilities plus the motion features. CAD connections allow CFD users to work with their native CAD data in the DSE. The DSE can import Autodesk Inventor data at no additional cost, and can also import some generic file types. CAD connections for NX, Parasolid, and ProEngineer are sold separately. More detail on the file type supported by version year can be found at the URL listed on screen. There is another option, not found on the comparison matrix. It's called CFD Flex. CFD Flex is a term license issued to a single named user. A subscription fee is paid at regular intervals to maintain access. CFD Flex includes all the CFD products detailed on the left. It includes the DSE and the Motion Solver, which is the highest tier, all-inclusive solver. It also includes all of the CAD connections. CFD Flex is also unique in that it enables users to send solving tasks to cloud data centers, offloading the most computationally intensive part of the process. These cloud solves are paid for using cloud credits. A quantity of credits is supplied with each renewal, and additional credits can be purchased. Unlimited local solving is also included with CFD Flex. The basic solver supports incompressible flow, internal or external, turbulent or laminar. Flow is considered to be incompressible below Mach 0.3. Most engineering flows are incompressible and turbulent. If compressible flow is needed, the advanced solver is needed at a minimum. When fluid flow is compressible, the fluid density varies with its pressure. Compressible flows are usually high speed flows with Mach numbers greater than 0.3. Examples include aerodynamic applications such as flow over a wing, as well as industrial applications such as flow through high performance valves. Compressible flow analysis allows for the formation of shocks. This includes water hammers in the case of a liquid. The basic solver is limited to steady state analysis. A steady state analysis does not develop a time history of a problem, but returns the solution at equilibrium. For example, a steady state thermal analysis of a heat exchanger will not show you the ramp up period when the heat exchanger is heating up. It won't tell you how long that takes. What you will see is the temperature of the heat exchanger when it finds a balance and things stop changing. This is very useful information, and it may be enough for your application. If you need to see an event happening over a period of time, you will need transient analysis capability. In the case of transient, an accurate time history is developed, and the solution can be studied at any point in time. Systems can change over time, flow rates, temperatures, heat flux, and more can all be varied throughout the event. Animations and graphs of the event can be output. Scalar mixing can be used to study the mixture of two similar fluids. Think of a scalar as a marker die that can be introduced into another fluid. 
the ratio of the scalar to the original fluid is tracked throughout the domain. The properties of the fluid can vary with the presence of this scalar, meaning the overall density or viscosity of the mixture can change as the scalar is added. There are limitations. Liquids cannot be mixed with gases, and a third fluid is not supported. Despite its limitations, this feature is commonly used to study industrial mixing applications or to track pollutants and smoke in architectural applications. With the free surface modeling capability, you can dynamically simulate the interface between liquids and solids. This ability is essential for modeling flow phenomena such as waves, sloshing, and spilling. These are flows that occur in nature as well as in a wide range of engineering applications. I'll just let this video play out because this stuff looks really cool. Dual heating is the generation of heat by passing an electric current through a metal. Also known as resistance heating, this function simulates heating due to electrical resistance. Examples include stovetop burner elements and space heaters. The primary inputs are current, voltage, and the material resistivity. Outputs include current density, ohmic loss, and temperature. Several features listed on the comparison matrix can be distilled down to three words. Robust Radiation Model Radiation is one of the fundamental modes of heat transfer, alongside conduction and convection. Conduction, which is heat transfer within or between solids, and convection, which is heat transfer via a moving fluid, are both supported by the basic solver. Radiation is heat transfer via particles or waves, not necessarily through a physical medium, and the advanced solver is required at a minimum. In many engineering applications, the dominant modes of heat transfer are conduction and convection, with the effects of radiation being negligible. As temperature differences get more extreme, or when bodies are separated by vacuum or near vacuum, radiation becomes important. Radiation can be applied as a boundary condition in the basic solver, allowing the user to approximate heat entering or leaving the system due to radiation. This is not a true radiation model, and is similar to adding a convection coefficient to the boundary of a system to approximate surrounding air. What is meant here is a true body-to-body -body radiation model. In this model, bodies within the system can transfer heat to one another without being in contact, and bodies can shadow other bodies. Radiation can pass through transparent or semi-transparent solids. Solar loading is another application of the radiation model. It allows you to simulate solar radiation. This can be done for exteriors and interiors. You can specify specific geographical locations as well as latitude and longitude. You can also specify date, time, compass direction, and object orientation relative to the sky. These analyses can be run in steady state or as a time accurate transient analysis. Cavitation is a physical phenomenon that occurs in many high velocity liquid flows. When the liquid pressure falls below the vapor pressure, vapor bubbles form in the liquid. Cavitation is commonly found in high performance valves, flow control devices, pumps, and propellers, and can greatly reduce the efficiency of these devices. Prolonged cavitation leads to pitting and erosion of the device, resulting in costly downtime and repairs. The cavitation model tracks the vapor bubble volume fraction and predicts the onset and location of bubble formation within the flow. The motion solver is the most capable solver available. It includes all the features of the basic and advanced solver and adds, well, motion. The Autodesk CFD motion module provides the ability to analyze the interaction between solid objects in motion and the surrounding fluid. The effect of the motion on the fluid medium as well as the flow induced forces on the object can both be analyzed efficiently and quickly. The comparison matrix breaks motion out into several items. It points out that motion can be fluid driven or prescribed. Prescribed typically means the motion is driving the fluid. The matrix lists several items that are simply descriptions of the motion. Linear, angular, and combination linear angular are the most common. Look at the examples on screen. On the left you'll see a ram air turbine. This is an example of fluid driven angular motion. 
On the top right, you'll see the poppet of a check valve. This is an example of fluid-driven linear motion. The graph shows some of the output available from such an analysis, including hydraulic forces and torques, as well as displacement, all plotted versus time. Other common examples include control valves, centrifugal pumps, axial fans, and industrial mixing propellers.